I just uploaded a video about how to square up a building three times faster, and you guys took me to task because I didn't say anything about establishing the first two parallel lines. First rule is to make your baseline longer than you're going to need it to be when you're done. So pick a point, make the stake plumb, drive it down, hit a tree root, and then tie a string on, a mason's line, either twisted or braided, I don't care, and use a lark's foot. We've got a video about this, see that? And then put the lark's foot on so that it renders or comes tight on the outside of the structure or the fence or the garden. I'll show you why in a bit. Now this is way longer than it needs to be, and that's good. We're going to drive a stake out here to receive it. One way to make a stake plumb is to let it hang from between your fingers, and then try to maintain that attitude as you put it in the ground. Now to stretch a string on a square stake, you put what I call a binder knot, or just a hitch really by putting it against the side of the stake that you want it to be referenced off of, putting one wrap around the stake, and pulling it like this. Around the stake. And let the tension side of the string pinch on the end of the string. You can pull it with one hand, take up the slack with the other, as tight as you want. Much easier on a square stake. So this now is the baseline. Pretty arbitrary, but that's okay. The thing we're gonna go do now is drop back to where we think we're gonna want the end of our rectangle to be. And I'm gonna bring this line stake over, letting it hang plumb until it touches the string. I'm going to drive it down, keeping it in gentle contact. The reason for that will become clear in a minute. Here's a bonus for using a square stake. It'll cut a line. With the baseline in, much longer than we need it to be, and with the string on the outside of the stakes, we're ready to jump across and get a rough width on the parallel line that matches this. Rough. The string on the outside of the stake enables me to hook my tape directly on the string, directly adjacent to the stake, and pull with minimum deflection. Now I'm just guessing it's square. It doesn't make any difference at all at this point. No difference. And I'm going to come 36 feet and I'm going to put the, st the stake inside the 36 feet. So the 36 is at the outside edge of the stake. Close enough for right now, because this is all going to change. This is a Spencer automatic rewind tape. We've got a video about this. Sure beats cranking it, doesn't it? It'll make a hero out of you. So this is close to 36 feet. We're going to pull the string down to that end and do the same thing. I put a lark's foot on it so that it renders or comes tight on the outside of the stake at approximately the same height off the ground and walk down the distance. I'm going to set the string down, get a stake close, and go put a tape on it. Let's see how we did. We're at 33 feet. Let's jump it out here. Eyeballing square, outside of the stake at 36 feet, roughly. 
understanding that it's not right yet. Thirty six feet to the outside of the stake. and put a binder on it. So what we have now are two strings roughly parallel. Probably not all that close at all, but we're at least getting into the ballpark and we're ready to start fine tuning this. Now I put another stake in. Somewhere closer to where we want the end of the building to be. Pretty close actually. in contact with the string. We are going to consider this string to be correct and that string to be adjusted. Same move, hook the tape on the string on the outside of the stake and what that does is it allows you to pull on that string on that stake and get very close to a true reading. Right now is where the magic begins to happen. The shortest distance between that stake and this string is the point at which it is square. The shortest distance appears to be 36 and 5 eighths. We didn't quite get that one in the right spot, but pretty close. So I'm going to take this stake right there. Actually 36 and 3 eighths. I'm going to drive that stake at 36, which is the width we want, adjacent to the point at which it is the shortest distance. Just like that. And then tighten it up. And then check it. And then tighten it up. That's within a sixteenth of an inch. Now here's a note. I did not shoot a level grade on this because this yard is kind of level and two or three or four or five inches up or down on the ends of a 50 foot line, 36 feet away is going to make a minimal amount of difference, which can be accommodated as the forms are built because what you do when you're laying out a building is you are getting it progressively more and more perfect in dimension. And we're going to get these parallel lines in within probably an eighth of an inch, which is not bad. Next move, go down to that end, do the same thing, and we will know that we have two stakes exactly 36 feet away from that string at a point that is square from that string. See that? We're growing. 36, 1, 36, 1, 36 foot 3 eighths of an inch right there. So I bring this in to the 36 foot mushy ground. We're going to drive that. Look at that, sports fans. So now you can see why the first strings that you run need to be long. They need to be wide so that that line stake doesn't mess up with when we're actually bringing it in somewhere close to the building corner. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to um, I'm going to pull those strings off the end and tie them to this. At this point, if I had a laser, I could shoot a grade on that shoot a grade on the other end and have these things to grade and to line. Here's the takeaway. That string, that stake is exactly 36 feet from the other string. I'm going to go down and cut that end loose, tie it on to the correct stake, stretch it to this stake, and we will have our objective of two parallel lines. Look how sweet this binder is. That string's tight. Now it's loose. Now I'm going to put a lark's head on this one so I can stretch it the other way. I put the lark's head on, 
so that it binds away from the concrete. Hold a little tension. Walk down to the other end. Put a binder on this. I would put it on the laser mark if we would have done that. Parallel. Let's go shorten that side. We'll pull this stake just to avoid confusion. This string is tight, and now it's not. So I drop down to right here, put a lark's foot on so it binds on the outside of the stake. Hold a little tension, go down to the other end. We're going to tie onto this stake that we know is right. And now we have two parallel lines. So let me show you why it's important that your line stakes are on the concrete side of the string. You want to put forms up. Now the forms can go right by the line stakes without disturbing them. You see that? If the string would have been on the other side of the line stake, you couldn't run the form wild. See the beauty of this hammer? If that grade was too high, boom, you can chop it out. And then you use your single jack to back up your form. Bring it up a little high, start it, back it up. One, two eight penny duplex. This end is good. We'll put a nail in it. Pull the concrete, start the nail. And then to make it perfect, you tap it down. If you're interested now in how to get a square line across here, check out the video. We just uploaded it three weeks ago. These two videos go together like peas and carrots. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.